Welcome back to Rimworld. So, a couple of big changes coming out of the bats are on this episode. A lot of people over Discord have been telling me that maybe we've got a lot of mods that really don't fit into the series, or, or it's kind of been suggested that a lot of the mods we should take out and maybe look at them from uh, in a different series. So, what I've done is I've removed Rim Atomics and Rimfella because, you know, last episode I asked uh, what would be good to do sort of during the mid range. A lot of people said Rim Atomics and Rimfella, but then a lot of people were also saying that it's such a massive mod, you could probably do an entire series of it by itself. So what I'm thinking is, well, well, I've stripped that out, it still works as normal, you know, we've got no bugs or anything like that. For the you guys playing on this pack, just so you know, I, I don't have that, you guys obviously still will. I'm not going to edit the Steam Mod Collection or anything like that, just in case people have already started, you know, with that stuff. We'll probably take a look at that stuff in a later series, because I do want to go back to uh, the Genetic Engineering mod. They've added an sort of end game to that now, where you can actually win the game with your genetics. So I think that'd kind of be an awesome thing to check out as well. More about the alternate win conditions right now, if you ever guessed. I think, I think those are a lot more fun than just the usual sort of RimWorld, let's get in a spaceship and fly away style. So... We've got a lot of starvation, as per usual, because we've got a lot of crops and a lot of people, and, you know, like I said, we've had winter for the past, what feels like a thousand years. Oh, we've still got the volcanic winter, haven't we? Luckily, it's in summer, so it doesn't matter too much right now, but during the winter, normally this would be a map whereby we'd be able to grow crops during the winter, because I think it gets to, like, six degrees at the coldest. This time, we still can't. You know, we're, we're still screwed because of the volcanic winter. That could potentially last another year or two. So what I'm doing, that even though the rice isn't grown yet, I am forcing Jilp's only 81% to just get all of this harvested as soon as possible, because our people are literally starving to death. Like, right now, they're actually eating the raw rice there. It does kind of suck. I did also test out with these traders as well, seeing what these guys had, see if they had any food. We'll send someone over just so I can show you guys as well. They've got some interesting stuff that I was sort of waiting until we got into things before I bought. So let's go and uh, take a look at that very briefly here. So we can sell them our corpses. Obviously, we're not going to. Those are our cool little corpses. Do we need five or six components? Wait. I'm going to go and look up very quickly the fabrication bench. Just to make sure that it is four components you need for, uh, uh sorry, for four advanced components that you need for that. Let's just take a look here. Because being able to craft advanced components in the future means you don't have to worry about it. So, oh, it's only two advanced components. Oh, I actually no, I had no idea. Shit. Well, there we go. Okay. So, we've actually got that. No worries there. It is just two advanced components. We could even sell a couple if we wanted to. We'll keep them just in case we want to build two benches or anything like that. They've got glitter world medicine. Obviously, quite useful. They've got luciferium, which would be super useful for... Feeding to enemy raiders, things like that, so they come back with an addiction to Luciferium. That means they'll also bring Luciferium with them. Um, I'm going to sell them these. We're going to try and empty our, you know, our, our treasury a little bit here, our stockpile, because we've just got way too much shit again. We'll sell them all the ammos that aren't armor-piercing in hindsight. That's probably a really good idea, because that way we also keep a bit more track of that. I've been advised not to keep the ammo near the weapons, because apparently when prisoners break out of prison, they will immediately try and grab some weapons. Not only that, the ammo, as we found out last episode, is kind of dangerous. If it catches fire, it'll just fire off in every single direction, which is awesome, because I think we could definitely make some traps out of that as well. Right, so let's get rid of all of this sort of garbage, regular old ammo, machine gun ammo we don't really want. Um, that's fine. Do we want to sell some of these heart regulators? We have 30 of the damn things. Uh, I'm going to sell some for now. We can obviously craft some more in the future if we have some misbehaving prisoners that we want to give heart attacks to. What is that? Sleep deprivator. What the fuck? Particularly cruel brain implant that messes with a person's sleep cycle, effectively causing forced insomnia. That's so awful. We've got Neutramine Incubator. What does that do? Have you ever wondered where Neutramine comes from? This sounds like it could be incredibly useful. Secret is this cruel, ingenious little implant. Implanted in the chest and extended like a delicate plant, it will grow, spread, and eventually consume a patient. But will create precious Neutramine from their bloated, mutated limbs. What? That sounds to me like, um, like Bioshock. You know, the, uh, the little... What are they, like the little slugs or the sea slugs that they implant in people? And then they get the, is it Eve or Adam? I never remember. They get the, the powers out of that, don't they? That sounds awesome. I'm absolutely bummed with those. It's only 62 as well. So if you've got a misbehaving prisoner, just turn him into new training. That's awesome. Um, they've also got like bionic arms here, which we actually might want to buy here. Fits monkeys and megatherium. Oh, it's an animal arm. Shit, okay, ignore me. That's a good job we didn't buy that. Otherwise, there'd be me going, why the hell can't we install this? For about four hours before I realized. So I'm going to buy the tube television, I'm going to buy the telescope, because we actually have very little recreation variation right now. I think we've got, um... Wait, what do we have? I don't think I ever built a pool table, did I? Or, like, a poker table. I think we've actually just got, like, relaxation and then social. Yeah, we should probably buy a couple of these. So we've also got this one here, which I am definitely interested in. We are definitely going to buy one of these. It's recreation. Uh, it counts as electronic play, same as... Oh, I think we've got arcade cabinets. But, if you look at this, gives a boost to learning after use. We put that in Jilp's room, and then when Jilp wants to do recreation, sits on his PC for a bit, playing RimWorld, or starting his Let's Play series, or whatever. When he's done with that, he can immediately start researching, and maybe get a boost out of it. And of course, our other, you know, um, 
intellectuals, scientists, researchers, whatever you want to call them, will also get that bonus. So I'm kind of tempted to buy that as well. How much is it going to cost us? We can afford it. Holy shit, that's awesome. Um, do we want to sell anything else? Just sort of empty the stockpile a little bit. Nah, we want to keep the plastic. We want to keep the components, the corpses, everything. Else. So we've got 600 plastic. Man, that quarry is uh, it's working as intended, huh? Right, there we go. Nice. Okay. So let's... um. I guess we'll just install this here. Seems kind of convenient. Let's get, like I said, the uh, modern computer installed in, like, Job's bedroom or something. Now we'll, we'll put it in the research room, because I doubt Job wants people going in his bedroom. Switch around. It's probably, like, that way around, huh? I imagine that's where the interact spot is. I have no idea. I can't really tell. Uh, then we've got a television as well. We could do it with, like, our recreation room, because right now the colonists really don't have anything, huh? Or our, our wardens don't have any where to, to recreate. Oh, they've got their, um... They've got the, uh, the, the chess table. So we could put it in this room somewhere and turn this into a more of a recreation room. We've already got the arcade cabinets in here, so why the hell not do that as well? So the other thing as well, people have been suggesting a lot of which I fully agree with is putting the hospital as close to the kill box as possible. So what we'll do is we'll probably build a hospital in sort of this area. That way we can hook it up to this or whatever else. Somewhere where both our prisoners and our regular colonists are going. It needs to be as close to the kill box as possible so that if our people are shot or if, you know, we shoot people that we will definitely want to capture, which is going to be everyone because it's a prison, then we need it to be as convenient as possible. So in this area, you you know, we've got two geothermal vents, so we could have it in its own separate grid. That way, if we overload the power system, our vitals monitor is going to stay online. You know, a literal life support there is going to stay online. I think that's not such a bad idea. This is just a temporary thing anyway. Obviously, we've only got one bed. So working on the hospital might be something I want to do this episode. Seeing as the prison is basically finished, we've just got to decorate the fucking house. So this is going to be, as you can see there, I put down some basic, basic showers. Just a simple shower room. Uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, this is going to be, like I said, dining area, kitchen area, freezer. And then a big farm for the prisoners to work in as well to go and earn their, themselves a little bit of cash there too. I think that's good. Oh, you know what we might want to do? We might want to put a door here and then a door here and then use that as a walkway so the prisoners can get out to the... Um, and, and then basically do something like this, right? So the prisoners can get out to the farm without having to go through the dining room and through the kitchen or without having to go through the freezer, more importantly, and letting all the heat out. So that's a lot better. In fact, what we could also do is remove these and force them to have sort of an airlock style system. So all the all the crops will be freezing in this room. The only way they can get in there, there's only one way in, one way out, if that makes sense. Now, I believe stall doors allow temperature, don't they? Does not prevent heat loss. Um... How can we do that but still allow prisoners to get in there to cook for us? That could be a problem I've not thought about. Because regular doors will... Oh, what if we just hold it open? Because I believe a held open door doesn't allow heat to transfer to, but allows prisoners to get through. We'll have to test it out, essentially, is what I'm getting at. Because I, I don't really know a good way to keep the temperature in, but also have it count as prison. Because like I said before, this all counts as the prison area they can go into, because we're only using these stall doors. I have no idea. We'll, we'll get to that later on, huh? How are we doing in terms of meals, then? Mallet's going to grab a whole bunch up and then hopefully start cooking us. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Right, nothing to worry about then. Starvation is dealt with temporarily. We've got to make sure, and in fact, something I might do as well. I'm going to cancel that job there so it doesn't work all night. I've got to make sure that we are growing and harvesting crops. To be fair, I've set them all to priority too. I guess it is literally just the winter. I mean, there's not much else we can do there, huh? Uh, Piccolo wandering around confused because of dementia. And then everybody has a bedroom, don't they? That's the other thing I just wanted to check very briefly. Certainly looks like it. We've got random prisoner bed here that I will turn that back into non-prisoner. Awesome. Everyone's got a bedroom. Everyone's fairly happy. Don Trump here, I imagine, is just hungry. What's wrong with you? Ratia power disturb. Oh, he's going to be super happy when they wake up. Yeah, we've got nothing to worry about in terms of mood then. So one thing I wanted to update. Now, I did say yesterday I checked the social tab and then actually forgot to do that. So let's take a look here. Um, child. Piccolo there, because he obviously turned him into a vampire. Friends with Don Trumpian, that would make the most sense. Don Tr Trumpian, Turkey Arasa there. Uh, acquaintance with demonetized Count Chocula, who really, really likes Jilp, but Jilp doesn't give a fuck. Why does Jilp... Oh, it's probably his ghoul or something, huh? Yeah, that's probably it. Mal Pomery, not big friends. Obviously, Jilp, Mal Pomery, and Van Tronner all turned up together. Van died, unfortunately. He's probably one of these antiseptic corpses now I think about it. It's like, what do we do with his corpse? Yeah, I really should have buried him and, and built him a statue or something. Rivals with Edward Collin... There could only be one vampire, let's be honest. It's not going to be Edward Cullen. Um, so Edward Cullen is Don Trumpian's father, which I completely forgot about. Acquaintance with Ali Card. Yeah, everyone's... Uh, ooh, rivals with Mal Pomery and Demonetize there. This is kind of cool. We've got a nice little... Uh, we've got a lot of friends. Pic Piccolo is, is beloved, which I think is par for the course. Nobody really likes Mal. No one really likes Demonetize, I guess, because these people are new. Uh, Edward Cullen is lovers with Ali Card. You know, we should probably give them the same bedroom then. I didn't want these people to get too sort of comfortable. But in hindsight, that's very, very easy mood and doesn't really affect us too much. Gives us another spare bedroom. I think Count Jilp would approve of that. You know, saving a little bit of space there. Those guys are going to be happier and it's really no extra work for Count Jilp as well. We've got enough wood for this. We really don't, huh? It's because 
fucking winter. At least the trees are growing back now, so we've got that going for us. Oh, and of course, we built an entire prison, which definitely used up a lot of our wood supply. Let's get in, let's get to some chopping, Joe. Let's get this done as soon as possible, because the last thing we want is colonists, like, sleeping on the floor when we could very easily avoid it. Um, that's not going to be enough, my friend. That is, that is still not going to be enough. Are we working on, like, uh... No, we have all of these built as well. My god, that took no time at all. We're going to have to hook this one up. I actually didn't even realize this one built. That must have happened when I was stopping the recording on yesterday's episode or something, because that genuinely popped up out of nowhere. How's that bedroom coming along? It's not. Um, we do have a spare bed, because it's Edward Colling and Demonetized, right? They want to sleep in a room together? Actually, I don't remember. Edward Colling and Alucard, right. So we get rid of this bed, and we could get rid of this one and potentially have them sleep in the same room. So let's get Job just do that very quickly, because we have no wood, as per usual. Story of my life. Uh, moving, moving where? Oh, we can't go outside because of, you know, the horrible sun. Who else is our builder? We don't have a daytime builder right now, do we? We really don't. That's one thing I'd love to get back. Oh, Mal's not... Oh, no, Mal. Mal, you, you were always our daytime builder, right? Who was it who died? It was Van, I remember. Okay. Um, yeah, come and, come and work on this immediately. Let's get, let's get that dealt with. All right, there we go. So one of the things to take a look at very quickly now that Mal has done that is we have an exotic goods trader. I'm really glad I've turned these back on now that we can actually buy some stuff, huh? So what can we sell to these? We've got a pain amplifier. That would be awesome if we got every prisoner a pain amplifier. Because that means if we ever get a, um, a a prison break, we can just punch them. We can melee attack them and the pain will be so good that they'll just drop and it will barely do any damage. That could be insanely useful. We'll have to we'll have to remember those exist. Probably part of the war crime squad. Crucifixes I would also love. Just dot them around our kill box for people who uh, who really start dismaying us. For prisoners who are on their last strike and really can't keep themselves under control. Just stick them up on a goddamn crucifix, huh? That seems fun. We've got ourselves a long wave radio. Um, now that I believe is something you could put down and it has like a big area of effect. That sort of affects everybody in the area and gives them a mood buff. So we might want to put that in, like, the, the workroom or something along those lines. It's probably not a bad idea. Uh, we don't really have enough gold for that, though, team. What could we sell? Um, got a telescope. Got two tube television. Yeah, we know that one. Uh, sell a bit of plasteel. We've got a lot of plasteel. And to be fair, they've been basically working in the quarry for ages because obviously they can't sow crops or do anything like that either. How much do we want to sell here? Like, 400? Uh, how much gold have they got? Oh, they got so much. Yeah, I'll sell 400 because they're not doing anything with it right now. So we might as well do it while we've, uh, while we've got it, huh? So... Uh, let's get that hauled. Are we not installed the tube television yet? I guess because Jilp's, uh, Jilp's obviously trapped in his bedroom needs our head builder. Cool. That worked out pretty well. Now this thing, yeah, there we go. So that works exactly how I thought it did. We could put this in the rec room. Look at that. If we put it in the middle, it covers everything. So when they're working, they're going to get a move bonus and I think maybe some recreation as well. I'm not entirely sure how that works. So let's keep a close eye on that. That could be awesome. That could be seriously, seriously cool. In fact, who is our crafter? We'll just test this very quickly. Um, who's our best crafter? I guess it would be Mal. Fucking Mal, good at everything again. We've got another series where some one character is good at everything we need here. Uh, Don Trumpian could start training him up. He doesn't have a passion in it, though. I really just think it would be better to train Mal up and then just not have him do so much building all the time. Yeah, sure, it's a, it's a nice backup job for him. Fuck it, let's do that then. Even though his skill is low, it won't take long to build up. Uh, we don't want that one. We want uh, machining. That's what we want. Okay, so Mal, let's get you over to do that. And I just want to check, like I said, that it just gives a mood bonus. I, I believe it does. All right, hospital, very impressive. This counts as a hospital, does it? With its stone cutting table and its its arcade cabinets. Well, I guess so. All right, uh, go and do that one, and we'll see if his mood increases. Uh, so let's keep an eye on his recreation bar specifically. Uh, it does not. Burning passion work, spatial interior, ambient music. Oh, that's cool. So it's just a plus three mood bonus. That's actually really, really good. I like that one a lot. Um, and then, of course, because he's got burning passion in it, if we actually set him to do that, it's going to make him super happy as well. I can't believe that. We can give this guy a mood bonus by forcing him to work. That's insane. All right, there you go. Carry on with your life, my friend. And more plasteel as well. It's obviously nice. Oh, that's probably where a lot of our plasteel came from, huh? Because we killed, like, what felt like a thousand mechanoids, obviously disassembled their ships and everything, too. So I was told with regards to the Vise that the ghouls drink, that apparently it's a social drug that I would have to manually sort of add to the drug policy uh, to, to allow them to drink, but apparently not. Because obviously it does say, and I, I, do, I do believe you, but I think we've maybe got a bug going on here. It says, uh, obviously, Vise addiction, which would imply that they need Vise, so obviously not going to withdraw or anything like that. The issue is, if we try and set up a policy here, let's just go new policy, it's not actually on the list. Um, now, I don't know if this is the base game remod, if it, this is what this interface looks like, because I always play with mods. I don't know if this is added by a mod, and then obviously, of course, you know, Vita isn't support, so it's not on here, or whether I have to do something entirely different. But I just thought I would bring it up, actually, in an episode, so, so that you would know I'd seen the comment. I just don't know how to uh, actually set that up, because it doesn't seem to be on the list anywhere, uh, unless I'm missing something. Like, we could set it to unrestricted, but we don't even have unrestricted, so I don't entirely know. Uh, maybe it's like a food restriction now? I never actually thought about that. Um, 
lavish? Does that does does Vitae count as lavish food? Raw food? Uh, what well, animal product maybe? I mean meat? I have no idea. Look, it doesn't matter too much. Either way, we'll keep a close eye on things. And um, if if I see something while I'm trawling through the menus here as I'm trying to find it, then uh, then I'll bring it up. If not, if you know, please for the love of God, let me know as soon as possible. So one thing I am doing is hunting a whole bunch of shit. A bunch of boomlopes spawned in. Now I know that boomlopes you actually milk not for chem fuel this time around, but instead for uh, a propellant for bullets and like rockets and things to make gr grenades as well. I think. So I'm trying to tame those guys because that would be incredibly useful if we can have the prisoners looking after the animals as well because they they're more than capable of doing so. We've got somebody who's good at training and handling count. Chocula, um, and not really great at much else, so, well, besides research, but we've already got that fairly well covered, I think. So I'm going to send Count Chocula to actually go out and try and tame these boomlopes, bring them on board, they don't need grass, we've got an indoor greenhouse for them eventually, or, you know, even use some planters, feed our, you know, boomlopes using prisoners, that sounds incredible. Um, yeah, besides that, though, we're just going to have to hunt for quite a very long time, to be honest with you, because our crops are still nowhere near grown. 79% on our red lentils, and those guys provide a decent amount of nutrition. Obviously, corn is going to take a while as well. I'm just hoping we don't get, like, another cold snap or anything along those lines, because that would, that would kill us. That would seriously, seriously kill us at this stage. Okay, this I want to build as soon as possible, because as I found out before, this uh, not having filtered water increases obviously the chance of just any disease, but got one specifically, which is why we've had them so frequently, and those things are a massive pain in the ass, especially when we've got so little food, we don't want the wasting meals or, or having a greater hunger or anything like that, so we're going to work on that next. I'm kind of tempted to keep going down this one and, and go straight for washing machines as well, just because, uh, oh man, hot tubs would be awesome, huh? Just going for washing machines just to be able to clean the apparel will, will make us so much money, but saying that, I also kind of want turrets, you know? Um, it's only fun to research. We're actually getting turrets as soon as possible. It'd be pretty good. Not only will it help us defensively, but also when the prison is set up, the last we want is big old prison breaks and not being able to fight that because it will literally be like potentially 20 to 40 prisoners versus what is probably only going to be about a dozen guards. So we're going to be massively outnumbered. Oh, nice. The first corpse harvest is in. There we go. Tasty, tasty. They don't get like a mood debuff, like observed rotting corpse or anything like that? No. I want to sleep with Alucard. I thought you guys could. Oh, wait, it's Edward Cullen and... Was it not Edward Cullen and Alucard? Yeah, well, just sleep in the same room, my man. Is it an unoccupied bed, you weird people? Oh, God. A group of pirates from the un... Oh, it's Count Chocula's brother. Okay, Count Chocula's brother is here to lay waste to the colony. Um, it's actually not as bad as I was uh, worried about here. What difficulty are we playing on again? Am I going nuts? I'm playing on Savage. This is Savage. What, five guys? Okay. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I mean, we do have Volcanic Winter, and obviously we're starving to death, but that's okay. Sure. Um, between them, they have apparently two guns. Oh, it's a bunch of snipers. So for us, this is pretty fantastic when we've got a very sort of close-range kill box. Sure, this could be great. Downside is we've got trees growing in our freaking kill box again. Um, what could we do? I mean, we could literally grow crops in the kill box. That would get rid of the trees, but, you know, it's not, it's not fantastically useful, is it? Um... I think what we'll do then is we'll quickly send somebody to come and chop these down. Uh, we'll just go cut plants and actually get rid of the trees themselves. Otherwise, it provides cover, and that's the last thing we want in a goddamn kill box. Everyone else, uh, let's squad up and get into position here, team. This is going to be very good. Is this roofed over? Yeah, it is. It looks particularly light in there, though. Obviously, we want our guys to be in darkness, so it's harder for the enemies to hit. Okay. Uh, are they attacking immediately? Oh, it's a, it's a siege. They're going to mortar us. Um... I've been advised I should really be, just be using mortars a lot more, so I'm actually kind of tempted to build my own to, to be able to counter this happening again. All right, what's barbed wire do? Can we just, like, can, if we put that through our kill box, will they have to walk over it? Uh, is it like like uh, sandbags, maybe? Are they more expensive? They are more... Uh, no, they're kind of the same, really. I guess they're just, like, sandbags, but cheaper, because these cost two steel, the others cost wood. Yeah, they look kind of the same. Anyway, um, sure. So what we want to do then is... I think, what time is it? Oh, it's 2 o'clock. I was going to say we'll send just, um, we'll, we'll send just Piccula out by himself. Seeing as he's a vampire lord. What we'll do then is we'll send Sniper Mel, who's actually got a long range rifle and he's got almost 12 shooting there, to maybe try and just aggro them so that we don't have to deal with this, uh, this mortar. Like I said before, if they hit the ammo stash with a mortar shell, our base is going to go up like fireworks. Let's move in, team. Okay, Mal is on a, on a mission. Lone man on a mission. Now, the issue is we are fighting many other snipers. Take him down. We've just got to roll lucky. We've just got to hope luck is on our side. Did we get him? Not even close. Are they shooting back at us? Watching for targets. This guy is attacking us. So it's Stark versus Pomri. Who will win? The classic showdown. Come on, hit him. Take him down. Bring him down. 
Legolas. <gasps> nice. Okay, we got a good shot off on Fox. The issue is their shells, they, they have built a mortar, which does suck. Um, hopefully, eventually. Oh, Mal is leveling up here. Nice work, Mal. Running for cover. That's okay. It's fine. You get behind cover. If we could just aggro them. If we can get any of them and just bring them over. There we go. That's actually exactly what I was hoping for. Nice. So not only that, we've actually captured their shells. They've got incendiary shells. They've got more shells. We could just uninstall this mortar, can't we? Or, or decommission it and bring it back over. That's so cool. All right. Fight us. Oh. Oh. Mal's head just got blown off. Uh, in one move, Mal's head was blown off. I'm a little bit... <laughs> I'm a little bit tilted about that. That's okay. You know what? Mal did it for the colony. He gave his life so that we could live. Because like I said, those mortar shells we have no defense against. Mal, you were the best of us. Thank you, my friend. I love that. It's just that he's just constantly firing over bullets. It looks like we're in victory. And then one of them just gets an insanely lucky shot. Blows his head clean off. Thank you, Mal. You won't be forgotten. We will build a statue to you. Uh, the greatest statue. Not as big as Jilp's statue. But it will be a big statue nonetheless. Jilp's actually awake. Praying. It's too late for that. He's already dead. Right, get over here. You're going to defend the, the, actual, the actual fighters here. Good luck. Okay. Here we go. I'm, ex I'm excited for this when we get to see if our kill box works for the first time. Here they come. Now, the best part is we're going to get a lot of sniper weapons out of this, which is going to replace our otherwise garbage. You know, we've got, like, these low-range shotguns, these garbage other rifles. Getting snipers, I think, is going to be fantastic. We may actually want to increase the size of our kill box. Because a lot of enemies, it's rare that we're going to have a whole squad of snipers coming for us. So we might as well increase the size of our kill box massively. That means our enemies won't be able to hit us at all. That would be fantastic. Good luck, team. These seem like a professional squad. Look, they've even got, like, bandoliers. They seem well-armed. Okay, good luck. Come on. Nice, good start. Suppressed, I like it. Now they can't stand on the- There we go. They can't stand stand on the sandbags. So they're going to have to go all the way back, and then they're going to have to walk all the way back through again. That works so fucking well. Come on. Nice. Okay, they, the issue is, we're suppressing them quite quickly. Oh man, I want to I kill them and take the weapon. So let's put you down to burst fire. Count Chocula, I appreciate the effort, but he is uh, he's gunning them down way too quick. And this is where Jilp's going to come in handy. This is where Jilp just stands here, war form, and just tanks the shots. Either, way, or either that, or we're just going to wipe them all out. My god, that was incredible. That was such a good raid for us. Get to work, squad. Let's pick them apart. So what have we found, then? Um, breathing out in five hours, savable. Ten hours, savable. Four hours, three hours. They're all savable. Um, are any worth recruiting? Animal shooting. This guy's got intellectual melee. We don't want any more intellectual characters. Um, mining is tempting. Daisy Stark. Uh, this guy's also kind of tempting. Marcus Rabbi Rebending. Uh, mining and plants and cooking means they're just a good all-round colonist. I think I may end up recruit Rabbi um, and just take the rest as prisoners. You're good at mining, but, I mean, a prisoner can mine. We don't want to bring them onto our colony, whereas I don't believe that we can have, or we can't have prisoners cook food for us, obviously. We don't want them to have access to those lavish meals. So I think, in order, we want to send Piccolo in here. He should have medicine in his backpack because of the setup that we've done for him. Um, gear? Does he? Gear? Excuse me. He does, 15 herbal medicine, right, okay. So, who is it we wanted to save? We want to save Ravi. So, Piccola, get in there and uh, stabilize. Go for it. Everyone else needs to get ready to drag them out. And then we'll send Jilp to go and bury, uh, to, go, to go and build it. Or we'll start building a sarcophagus for Mel, and then we'll go and bury the guy, because he, he was fantastic. Like I said, he was the best of us. Let's build a tomb as well. I love building tombs in Rim, whatever, since I found out they existed, because it's just such a cool idea. We could have Jilp's skull thrown. Or, we put the coffins in, in Jilp's throne room. That would be even cooler. So we'll just build him a temporary coffin for now until we've built something a little bigger. Um, royal coffin. Nope, we want an actual, like, straight up sarcophagus. Uh, made of bone. Bone sarcophagus. That's a hell of a way to die, huh? And we'll put it near the base because they do still want to, like, visit it just as kind of like a, you know, I'm really sad. Here's my friend dying. I'll go visit his grave or whatever. Right, Joe, start work on that. Or don't at all. Excuse me? Why can't I interact with that? Oh, there we go. Oh, we need wood first. Okay, sure. Let's put that, like, literally anywhere else in that case. We'll put it there. Fine, whatever. Right by the front door. Just exactly where a sarcophagus could go. Right, Jump's gonna work on that. We're gonna try and do our best to save all of these guys, if we can. We've got the snipers, which I'm really, really happy with. Let's actually strip them. That's what they, these other guys can be doing while uh, Pickle is uh, sorting them out there. Strip Verity. Demonetize. Strip. Blackthorn. Uh, Alucard. Strip. Uh, Stark. There we go. And then we want to keep Ravi, so I'll let him keep his clothes, because I'm feeling generous. Right, this way we've at least got some armor, you know, non-tainted armor is quite nice too. They had a lot of stuff. 
Like, sidearms and, and everything like that as well is pretty insane. Right, so Rabi is now more or less saved. So what we're going to do, Alucard, get ready. All right, save. Uh, what do we want to do? Capture Rabi. Uh, so Rabi should have a bedroom in here. Yeah, there we go. So Rabi's going to be putting that one immediately. Picula, let's stabilize Stark. You've got to remember, we do have to... It, it's not just a case of... Oh, God, are we out of medicine? 13. Just use the medicine in your backpack, you weird man. Uh, stabilize Stark. Not capturing... Okay, we've had this issue before. Um, so if we say stabilize, the issue is... Picula's going to run off and go and get some rather news and stuff in his backpack. So I think we have to pick it up again and then try it. Uh, stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. There we go. All right, it's working now for whatever goddamn reason. It's so weird. It's so weird how that system works. Got to bear in mind, stabilizing him is not going to save him. We do actually need to patch them up after the fact as well. So Don Trumpian, capture Stark. Right, Picula, let's get you to drop the medicine again. So gear tab, trick it on the floor, and then pick it up again for whatever goddamn reason. And then let's go ahead and stabilize Blackthorn next. Okay, we're good. So unfortunately, Verity just died there. You might have just seen it. Uh, let's get you captured. You pick up this medicine, uh, take an herbal medicine, and then get you over to there so that they can uh, come and help things out. That's a lot of good weapons. M24, heavy rifle ammo. We've got SVD. We've already got a couple of SVD. I assume this weapon is better. What I want you to do is go and grab Mal's weapon before it all starts deteriorating over here. Who was this? Oh, another one? Did they actually escape and get gunned down, or was that... I have no idea. We've got go juice, which is kind of annoying because we, we're going to have to forbid that now. All right. Uh, there we go. Let's just quickly get that dealt with. And then, who else we got? We've got Edward Collin not doing anything right now. Come grab these weapons, and then you, my friend, can go home. All right. And then everybody is doing stuff. Yep, we are good. Awesome. That worked out pretty well, huh? All right. The prisoners are delivered. We're going to patch up Rabby because Rabby we obviously want to keep immediately here. We've bought him a couple more hours there. Death in 20 hours. And then when you've done that, immediately start tending to Stark. Jilp's coming over here to try and drain their blood. Which I'm, I'm obviously we can't stop him because it's Jilp. He, I mean, it's his colony at the end of the day. But we do kind of need to make sure they're actually going to survive first, Jilp. They've already got probably massive, massive blood loss. Any more probably won't help. Right, there we go. So those guys are definitely saved now. Uh, they've got a nice little bedroom here. They could do with a shower. You know what? I never thought about that. They've, they've, this temporary prison. This could be the prison for the people that we want to make into wardens or ghouls or even a sense of vampires in very, very rare case if they are particularly impressive. Um, say they're like a high generation or something like that. We'll, we'll just recruit those guys and bring them on board straight away. Either way, very impressed by that. Jill reached level six in medical. Oh, Jill's actually helping people. Okay, fine. Welcome, Blackthorn. First person in the prison. That's lonely. What a fucking sad existence that is, huh? In this half-finished, lonely, cold prison. It's actually not that cold. In this just absolutely dingy, there's nothing to do there whatsoever. Just a big, empty, spooky, haunted prison. And then finally, last thing to do here. Uh, bury Mal, except also catch fire because of the sun. We should be good. There's nothing to worry about here. But don't put him in the freezer. This is one of our colonists, you weird man. Um, how do we... Well, let's say that the freezer is not for colony corpses. That, that's pretty good, right? Uh, allow colonist corpses on tick. Right, drop them on the floor. And then haul Mal. There we go. Thank you, Mal, for your service. You will not be forgotten. You may have just actually saved the colony there, and I'm not even joking, from a horrific mortar strike. Claim that one, and then we can actually reinstall it. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Okay, they don't have much of a range, right? Oh, that's a minimum range, isn't it? So we probably want to put it, like... Like, right here, huh? Because obviously this is all roofed over, so Jilt can actually move around without catching fire. Um, we'll put it far away, then. We'll put it close to this stop pile, and we'll keep more shells in there, because I feel like putting all the ammo and the guns and the more shells in the same area. Probably a terrible plan. Put it there, give them as much room as possible. That way, if they do get up to the kill box, we're not operating the mortar right next to the kill box, if that makes sense. Wow, that, uh, that solved a lot of our problems very, very quickly. Okay, so the turrets are done. For the next level of turrets, we need heavy auto turrets or charge blaster turrets. So what I'm thinking for that is... Um, we could go gas operation. That obviously lets us get to the much more complex weaponry here. I kind of want armor. Like, I genuinely just want to start working on armor next. So we'll go for fabrication to allow us to obviously make, you know, components, whatever. Then we'll go for powered armor and actually get everybody equipped. Because the bone armor is cool. Makes them look kind of spooky and all that. But I think powered armor will literally save their lives. Whereas bone armor is just kind of like, not really going to do well against a high caliber bullet, is it? Oh, nice. Our, our food is almost ready as well. Sweet. How are we doing in terms of meals then? Do I have to panic anymore? 11 meals. Yeah, we are going to have to go hunt a little bit more before this shit is done. But besides that, we're in a pretty good situation, huh? It's been a very good day for us, especially as we've got all this new weaponry that we didn't even need to, like, buy. Um, although we did pay the sort of blood price in the form of Mal. So Jilp is our final surviving original colonist at this point. Of course, he's not going to die anytime soon. You guys were all saying, and I actually do know this, but I thought I'd mention it in a video as well so you guys uh, knew that we were all on the same page here. 
the um, the war form doesn't affect his damage or anything. It just makes his health bigger, which is why I use it because it you know makes him a little more durable. Um, doesn't actually you know affect his melee skill or anything like that. I do think that maybe melee isn't what we want to go for. Like war form is great and all, but what's his job have again? It's decent on like, a strong constitution makes him uh, more immune. To oh, that's pointless anyway because he's a vampire. Actually, all of his traits are kind of garbage. Um, Gabe is irrelevant. Psychopath is obviously pretty decent. Decent learner, though, still not massively irrelevant because he doesn't, you know, he's basically just our scientist. We've got so many of those friggin' things. I thought this was the Jilp that we played before that had the quick reflex or whatever. They gave him the melee dodge chance, which is why I was getting him to do melee a bit more. But in the future, let's just give him guns. Let's just have vampires with guns. I think that's, that seems a little more lethal. I'm actually kind of tempted to give him this N24. Even though he's not our best shooter... He's the guy I want to survive the most, unsurprisingly. He's actually got a passion for it as well. Um, who's got a higher shooting? Pickle, you are you are just garbage, huh? Uh, Don Trumpian is in a coma right now, or is catatonic. Because uh, of the Vitae addiction. Again, I don't know how to deal with that yet. I'll, I'll let you guys chuck some feedback at me with that one. Um, so you've got four shooting. Oh, we've got a whole menu here that literally shows that. 5 to 13. Okay. So I think, in, f in fact, you guys can get... Or, or Count Chocula gets the M24. That's a great idea. Is he sexy? His brother died. Um, actually does not give a shit. That's incredible. Okay, um, in that case, let's go and, uh, start sorting out these weapons. Man, I have no idea where the time went, but apparently we are already done with today's episode. Thank you all for watching. If you guys can let me know about the, uh, Vitae thing and how exactly I'm supposed to manage that, that would be massively useful. I'm obviously gonna go do some research on my own, uh, in my own time here and try and find out what the hell's going on with that as well, but if you guys know, that would be super useful. Just in case there is something obviously broken with the UI, then you guys will definitely be able to tell the difference. Whereas I won't, because I've never played with this mod before. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who've made this series possible in the first place. We are going to be imprisoning very soon. And of course, all, everyone else as well. So uh, depending on how many names we get, uh, we can rename our... Can we rename prisoners? I don't know if we can, but I'll find a mod for it. I definitely want to be able to imprison all of you guys, because that will bring me a sense of... Uh, uh, achievement, was it? Achievement and Satisfaction? I don't remember what eBay said. eBay? EA. I don't remember. Big shout out to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kuroso, Atmosis, Austin Gauthier, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Blurry Bunny, Sedini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Escape, Fukundo Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindian, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smug, Musk Ratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofin, and Pelvis Presley, Surthal the Swede, Stannis Amanis, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry, Team Tyler Kendall, Bacchus Bacchus, and Zazzy7011. Thank you all for your support the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. And thank you for standing by me during this horrible YouTube time of Adpocalypse. Too many ad. It's the opposite of the Adpocalypse. It's like the ad. Uh, the ad great uprising. I don't really know. Name pending. And a big shout out, of course, as well to Asaro, Ad in person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Arachnid 44, Ben Troke, Better Smacked, Better Valerian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 27, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Gray, Haji Dumar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, I Swallow Calm, I See the Great, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Jose, Joran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Johnny No, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Liss Me, Llewellyn Thomas, Luke, Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick. My god, I'm struggling with this today, huh? Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, Shari, Smirtworm, The Insane Pickle, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico too. Thank you all for your support. I feel like the list got longer when I wasn't paying attention.